everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how our SpectraFlow software is organized and how you can navigate yourself around it for those of you that are new to our software. So first, if I go and open the software by double-clicking the SpectraFlow icon, we'll wait for it to load up here. Once it opens, you can go ahead and log in. The default user account that comes with the software is admin, and if you have your own user account or need one set up, go ahead and talk to the administrator of your system. Once you're in, you'll come to this landing page and you can see there's six different modules. There's a QC and setup module, which is where you would go to QC your instrument every day and monitor the performance based on that QC over time to make sure your instrument is healthy. Then there's the acquisition page. This is where you're going to come to set up your experiments, run all of your tubes, look at your data in the worksheets. This is where you'll spend the majority of your time in our software. The extra tools area is a place where you can go and re-unmix data files, maybe from a while ago that you're re-importing into the software. There's also a virtual filter tool here that we'll talk more to in a different tutorial. The library section is where a lot of content is archived, like worksheet templates, or experiment templates, or QC beadlots, and we'll go into that a little bit further in this video too. The preferences section is where you can go to change the look and feel of your software, and there's also some default settings that are useful for when you're in acquisition or when you're creating worksheets, and we'll go through that at a high level as well. Last but not least, there's the user section. This is where you would go to reset passwords, change passwords, add users, maybe change the user status from admin to operator or vice versa. And also you can look at the use time of users in this section. So let's go ahead and open one of these up. We'll go to QC and setup first. Now when the page loads, you can see the way things are organized in the software. Those, those six modules are always going to appear in the top right of the software here. We also have a help section as well that now shows. And in the help section, that's where you can go and see what version of the software you're running or check out our, our user guide or Flora Chrome information summary. But alas, I want to go back to QC and setup. When you're in our software, the way it's organized is there's always going to be this first menu here on the far left, and there'll be a series of menus you can navigate through here. And whatever one you select, that's going to open up into this next pane over to the right. And finally, that one feeds over to this pane on the far right, which is the where the majority of the content is displayed. So for here, I'm in Cytometer QC. I'm looking at my daily QC. My instrument is currently turned off. And how do I know this? I can look at this bottom right section here where there's a series of indicators. So when the system's on, it'll check to monitor your sheath level and tell you if it's green check for full. If it's starting to run out, it'll turn into this yellow indicator here that you see next to this waste icon. If the sheath is nearing empty or the waste is getting full, then in front of them you'll get this red X icon that you see in front of the cytometer. Now my cytometer status is in red because it's not connected to the software because my instrument's off right now. Same thing for the loader here. I don't have the loader turned on or powered on right now. And since everything's off, you can see all my buttons are disabled. So that's the general flow of the software. You can toggle down the list here, and you can toggle through the six different modules, and you're going to see that same type of organization. So you'll have this left pane menu. Um, you can hover over the icons to see what they are, or if you want to expand this far left pane, at the bottom here there's these arrows you can click to drag it out if you want to see the text in addition to the icon, or you can put it back condensed like this. And again, you can move from the left to the right. If I want to open a new experiment, I'll click this, and my new default experiment is going to open up in this right, far right pane. Same thing if I go to Extra Tools, that layout persists through all of it. Here's the library section, where you can see QC beads, fluorescent tags, labels for your tubes. You can work with user settings and import and export those. Maybe you have worksheet templates you want to export to another system or import from another system. Same for experiment templates. You can generate your own keyword lists and customize those. We'll talk more about that in other tutorials. And if you have a loader on your system, you can create custom loader settings and import and export those across your instruments. Over here is preferences. 
There's a lot of different options, which I'll talk to you in another tutorial about all the different parameters in here that you can come through and change. There's quite a bit of customization you can do for the aesthetics of your system and how your UI looks. Then you have the users menu. So I can see all of the users I have. I can reset their passwords. I can look at time and we'll go into that more in a separate video too. When you're ready to sign out, you can click the sign out button. You can choose to save whatever changes you made since you last modified your experiments. I'm not going to bother this time around. And then I'm back out at this landing page.